Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, Winning Cures Everything. This is the NFL Week 5 Recap Show. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. Ah, Chris, it's been a good week, man. Uh, college football was good. Uh, we had a good recap on that one on Sunday. You can go back and download that podcast. Uh, NFL, some interesting hey. stuff. A, a lot of exciting games this week. I, I yeah. thought there were some really good games. There were some games that were supposed to be crazy exciting and were complete were duds. duds. <laughs> but that, you know what? That's what I like about the NFL. Some of the best games came from out of nowhere. No, you're right about that. You are so, right about that. Um, let's talk about our friends in the Delta really quick. Of course, yeah. Tunica, Mississippi brings you the show every week. The South's premier sports gambling destination, Tunica, Mississippi. You can find more information on all six of their sports books over at tunicatravel.com. Uh, like I said, they bring you the show. They've got amazing stuff going on down there. Go check it out for yourself over on their website. Uh, you can find more information about us over at winningcureseverything.com. You can find our socials there, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, we're on Twitter at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE. At Chris B. Giannini. There you go. And uh, you can also get us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. Uh, make sure you hit subscribe. Leave a nice review for us. We would appreciate that. We're going to read those off on the show. Uh, I'll probably go ahead and read the last couple on uh, on the next go-round um, for the preview shows and whatnot. But, uh, but, yeah, we've got fun stuff over on the website. Go check that out. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit subscribe. Leave a comment. Tell us what you like, what you don't like. Tell us something that we missed. Uh, in this recap, we've only got a little bit of time to be able to knock these out. But, uh, but yeah, go check that out. Of course, winningcureseverything.com. Let's jump in. Uh, we've got the starting 11. Let's, yeah, uh, so let, let's fire into it. What's, uh, what's topic number one for you? Topic number one, give credit to a position that kind of gets crapped on in the NFL. A lot of people talk about how we don't need this position anymore or it's not as valuable or important. Um, running backs, but we all love running backs, especially if you play fantasy, you're into that. And uh, I want to talk specifically about the 2017 class of running backs. Now, I don't, <laughs> I saw this online, went back, started looking it up, got the got the numbers and everything together. Um, this might be the best class of running backs we've ever had. Now, I don't know how many Hall of Famers we're going to have come out of this. The game is so different today than it was. None of these running backs are ever going to have lifetime career numbers that, that guys had in the past that played for decades. Um, but we'll, look, I'm just going to run through the list, okay? At number four, Leonard Fournette. Number eight, Christian McCaffrey. Number 41, Dalvin Cook. Number 48, Joe Mixon. Number 67, Alvin Kamara. 86, Kareem Hunt. 105, James Conner. 119, Tyreek Cohen. 143, Marlon Mack, 182, Aaron Jones had himself a game Sunday. Yeah, he did. 249, Chris Carson, and then undrafted Austin Eckler and Matt Berea. This is a class where there's not really a bust anyway. No, there's not at all. Like it, which, hey, interesting stat about Aaron Jones, by the way. You know, we talked yeah. about, uh, you just said he had himself a game. The Packers. In goal to go situations, they give the ball to Aaron Jones. They're scoring a touchdown seventy percent of the time. Yeah. Every other play that they run when they don't give it to Aaron Jones in a goal to go situation, they score thirteen percent of the time. I was about to say I can't remember a touchdown pass in a goal to go that they've had all year. At me either. Oh, maybe you're talking about thirteen percent. So maybe they've handed it to another running back. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that. I don't know that they have a passing touchdown within the top ten yards. The I, last I, probably not. I mean, I, and, and and I hadn't watched every minute of every game. I don't remember, but I, I don't remember it. seeing it because I have watched several of the games and I don't remember that. So yeah, um, the only one that you would say is 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 if anybody wanted to be harsh and call him a bust would be Fournette for what they paid for a number four overall player. Yeah, but in how he's played and and what you're getting from him right now. He's absolutely not a busted player, and the rest of these guys are just unbelievable. So we'll, we'll get off running backs. We'll move through. I want to try to roll through these and, and not keep people so long, not go so long. But uh, so, uh, here before two, you move on, uh, yeah, Christian McCaffrey and Dalvin Cook. Um, uh, obviously, Alvin Kamara, one of the best players in football, maybe the best. Christian McCaffrey yeah. on pace right now for over twenty seven hundred scrimmage yards this year. Yes. Ridiculous. He could be the best goal position player 
in the NFL right now. Dalvin yeah. Cook completely changes that Minnesota Vikings offense. With, with him in there, they are a when completely they can, different team. When they can run the ball, I, and I think I have figured the Vikings out, when they can run the ball, you bet on the Vikings. Yeah. And when they can't, when they're playing a defense that we think is just they're not going to be able to run against, you, you can't play it. You just you can't bet them. Yeah, no, you're right. You're 100% right. Simple. All right, so you, you can move on from there. I just wanted to touch right. on uh, on those guys. Number two, we got to go all the way back to Thursday night football. This is the best game of the week that we had all week. These Thursday night games, not so bad. Maybe no. all the run about, you know, all these Thursday night games are so terrible and players get hurt and it's not safe and it's a bad one. Maybe we just got really crappy matchups, you know? Yeah, in because the past. Because we get two yep. good teams, they're really good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, talk about MVPs. Russell Wilson's got to be the leader in the clubhouse right now, right? That dude is something else, isn't he? Just something 17 else. for 23, 268, not crazy because yardage is a little overblown right now in the NFL, but four TDs, yeah. man. Man, he is, he is playing his lights out. Rams, two losses in a row. Got to go to the 49ers next week. Who are undefeated. Unde- the undefeated 49ers. Yes. And who look great, by the way. Yes. Not just undefeated, but, man, they look like they got their stuff together. That's I, I'm telling you, afterwards when uh, 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 Sherman was talking to the press afterwards and he was talking about how everybody on that team should be in the Pro Bowl, like on the defense, like it, I don't think he's wrong. Like it, no, right he, now, right now, their secondary is not great. He's a member of that secondary. They're not. They're not great. Okay. The, the we'll get to the Browns. We'll get to that game later. That their front seven, though. This is what we've talked about. I, if I had out. to build a team, and I had all the money to spend at a normal cap, and I'm starting from zero, I would spend the bulk of all my money on my front seven. In my offensive line, I, I just would. I think you can find skilled players at the other positions are a dime a dozen. And I know quarterbacks crazy important, but man, I don't think I'd ever pay another quarterback again. If I can build a great front seven, I just keep drafting guys and you want guys that don't turn the ball over that, that are going to be accurate, that you think can fit in whatever offensive system you're going to run in. That's a, a two, like just to hit on that very quickly. Um, I, that, it, cause I, do we have the, is that in the recap, last what? night's game? Yeah, I'll get there. Okay, all right, never mind. We Because I brought up uh, Richard Sherman. But um, back to the Seahawks and the Rams. Rams, two straight losses. Uh, that is a bit troubling. I mean, this one, though, you, you had a guy miss a field goal. Uh, people miss field goals in Seattle all the time. I, but they you also know. look at some of their wins. Not not great wins either, though. No, but, okay? but they still won the games. Uh, but Tampa Bay, like that loss – that is still just insanely puzzling. How you give up 55 points at home to Jameis Winston. I don't uh, know that they're that good. I don't know that they're that great of a team. That Browns game, the Browns gave them that game 100 times over. If there was any team whatsoever with any heart or brains, they beat the, they, they, the Rams lose that game. So that's three in a row. In the first game of the year when they played the Panthers, we know what Cam Newton is, and we know the difference between just taking Cam Newton out. We're not replacing him with a pro bowler. We're not replacing him with somebody who's just an incredible quarterback. Yeah. We're replacing him with just a dude that, that is fighting hard, trying hard, and, and and won't give the game away, and look what they look like. I think the Rams play the pa- uh, the Panthers right now. I, I, I got the Panthers favored. I think I, yeah, Panthers I think, I think you're probably right. Uh, I'll tell so, you this. the I saw something very interesting on – on Friday of last week, I guess it was, you know, after the Rams lose the game, it's, uh, maybe Colin Cowherd, somebody like that, was talking about, you know, Jared Goff got paid, yep. and he got paid well. But is he just a dude without Sean McVay? And we've been we've had this question for a while. Uh, think about somebody like Matt Stafford in that offense. Yep. I mean, how ridiculous would that offense be with. I've heard several people make that comparison. And, and I don't even know that. And I think Matt Stafford has an electric arm, an electric arm. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I think about, and we'll talk about him later too, I think about Andy Dalton. Like what would Andy Dalton's life have been like had he gotten drafted by some of these other teams and not in Cincinnati? Yeah. 
Because he he's been pretty good in Cincinnati. He's 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 been really good considering the talent around him and the coaching staff. Yeah, I think him. he gets a bum rap, man. Like he, yeah, I don't I don't think he's as bad as people make him out to be. No. Nope. Anyway, we'll move on. We'll, let's keep rolling. Second best game of the weekend, I think, came from Jacksonville at Carolina. This was a crazy game. Gardner Minshew is playing absolutely insane. There are people still questioning: Will Nick Foles and Cam Newton get their jobs back? Are you insane? Are you a crazy person? Is football not a meritocracy? <laughs> if Tony Romo, who at the time was the highest paid quarterback in football, I think, if not the highest, one of the highest, doesn't get his job back from Dak, then these two jamokes don't get their job back at all. They no, are I so agree. far past their primes, and these young guys are playing their butts off. There's no way you can go back to Foles. There's absolutely – because Jacksonville has never had a winner like this. Now, I know that they're only two and two – Two and three now. Um, they lost the game, but but they're in these games. And there's been seasons where they're a laughing stock and they're not in these games. And I would absolutely stick with him. Yeah. Kyle Allen didn't play great. He had a he had a mediocre to bad football game. He threw like 140 yards or something, but he doesn't give the game away. He he plays smart. He he makes McCaffrey better because people actually have to worry about him making plays in the passing game. Um, and, 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 and it just, they just make just enough to keep safeties back to keep the box open a little bit to where McCaffrey can find holes. And, uh, and it, it's, it is just incredible. Uh, Leonard Fournette in this game, 108 yards, a TD. He was a man, Christian McCaffrey, 160, uh, 76 yards rushing, 61 yards receiving two TDs. Um, and just, he was the most athletic, explosive player on the field. How crazy is it that McCaffrey is a significantly better player with a different quarterback? Like, just it, w- without Cam Newton on the field. I think it's the it, defenses. No, you're, 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 what NFL, you just said is defense, right. Yeah, if because, a defense wants to shut somebody down, they can. We've seen it for years. The Patriots have a terrible defense for the last, I don't know, six, seven years. They've been very mediocre at defense, okay? Yeah. And but what they can do is they can say we're going to pick one guy and he's not going to beat us and they take that one guy out of the team all the time they do it all the time and when Cam's in there you just take out McCaffrey you've won the game because Cam ain't beating anybody yeah no you're right you're right and you can't do that I, I with, with Kyle we're not replacing him with Aaron Rodgers we're not replacing him with with somebody who's a who's a surefire Hall of Famer and a stud. We're replacing him with Kyle Allen, who's a dude. Which, hey, think about this. Like, Kyle Allen, he and Kyler Murray were on the same team at Texas A&M under Kevin Sumlin, and both of them transferred out. Neither one of them played. (laughs) No, I mean, they played. They just, they, they weren't good. So no, they were, they were freshmen. So it's, they were young. They were young. Whatever. But Kyle Allen didn't play at Houston. You know? No, no, that's, yeah, that's, that's on Herman, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, he, well, no. I mean, it, it, I don't think it was that. It, like, I think De'Aaron King could come in, right? And De'Aaron King is like ridiculous. So, oh yeah, okay, I'm with you on that. Yeah, I think anyway. I think that's what happened there. But you know, to be fair, like we've seen backups in college come in and have you know pretty successful NFL careers, make a lot of money. That's right. That's right. So, all right, we'll move on. the The rivalry game of the weekend: Ravens Steelers. Boy, this, this was game, just gut wrenching, and uh. this is this is this is Raven Steelers football every year. It doesn't matter how these teams play. It doesn't matter who the quarterback is. They they could both average 40, 50 points a game. When they play one another, the scoring is going to go way down, and the bruises and the body count is going to go way up. That, hey, just, how, how about this? How about Mike Tomlin that? here in overtime, electing to kick the ball to the Ravens? <laughs> Like that so, is an indictment of Lamar Jackson. If the Steelers, I, I know, well, okay, you can say that. Yeah, I think it's the wrong decision. Even though I know your quarterback's not great and you're not afraid of Lamar, quote unquote. At the end of the day, all the analytics. You being an analytics guy, you understand this. Yeah, you just want as many shots as you can take to make a big play. And when you I, give them the first opportunity, they have more chances to make a big play than you have. I agree. And that scares me. I agree. I think the issue here was you got a third string quarterback that hasn't played, that has it. looked okay, 
So what you're hoping for is that you'll have Connor and Juju that can score on one agreed, play. Agreed. Um, man, the the last drive. So going back into the fourth quarter, that last drive where the Ravens come down and kick the field goal. Yeah. Man, you want to talk about an awful, absolutely awful roughing the passer call? Uh, that's just that. That's the whole reason why people get fed up with this rule because you, there's no way to know. What's what? No, but it happens in it happens in every game. Oh yeah, there's a there's a bad call. I I don't know what to do about the officiating. If 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 we're gonna hate on it to a point where we just can't watch football, we just got to stop. Yeah, because it's bad. And every sport's bad. And I don't I don't know what to do to fix it personally. So it's just bad. It's can really, you really bad. can you remember the last time that you saw? a quarterback actually get knocked unconscious in the game? No, but here's what's crazy is that didn't – like I've seen some really dirty hits. That one wasn't that, really a dirty hit. No, no. I mean, he he throws the shoulder. He he, he hits him kind of in the chest. The top of the shoulder probably hits it. It's the whiplash because he got hit from the back and the front. Yeah. I mean, this is like being the middle car of, of somebody, you know, coming this way and this way and rearing you and – uh, front end in you, and you're just standing there. I I think it's complete whiplash um, that that knocked him out more than head trauma because I I didn't see any massive hit to the head. No, it was it was just it, it was like the perfect hit, right? It, yes. It's like it's like when you're watching MMA, and yeah. it's just the you catch him at the exact right spot, and you, you see know? lights out, and you just you just see it. It's yeah, that, that was that was terrifying to watch in real time. Yeah. I can't believe they walked him off because I assumed because I I thought when I saw that play this is whiplash this is neck issues yeah and I guess because he's knocked out you know they're not worried about his neck they're worried about getting him conscious and then when he gets conscious nobody's really paying attention I I wouldn't have moved his head but not me either I I, I couldn't it, figure that out but yeah I thought that was crazy and then they walk him off I'm like oh man I'd I'd at least wrap something around it you know get get something to splint it just to anyway yeah I mean he seems to be okay I mean obviously he's he's in concussion protocol and he probably doesn't need to play next week yeah but he seems to be okay he might play but anyway that that'll be near here nor there that game is just always gut wrenching um you were on the right side of that in taking the Steelers. You, you anything more than a field goal when those two teams play, you're a fool for taking yep. for laying the points. You just are. That's, I agree. That's the truth, and we've seen too much history to change minds. Now you're right about that. But let's go to a, another game that was kind of ugly, but not nearly as violent. I think Frank Wright's a wizard. I, I think he's a. <laughs> I think he's a a mother freaking sorcerer, man. <laughs> I'll I'll tell you this. Uh, this made last Sunday even more. Uh, like where you just oh yeah unexplainable yeah. how they just lost to the Raiders at home yes yeah. okay you know, it, hey, listen sometimes you just gotta you just gotta take it all you throw it all the way and and you move on yeah. um that what that defense for the Colts did to this offense for the Chiefs is just something that there is. There is no alignment of the sun and moon and planets that will help explain this. They were down to – they did not have a single starting cornerback. A single DB is not a starter, and they had no more DBs on the roster, so all of them played every defensive snap, okay? Yeah. There was no, hey, I'm tired, hey, he just ran a long post and whatever, and now i got to take a – no, they play at every step. They were going to have to go to linebackers to start covering guys if they lost one more cornerback. That's and hey, we, we saw shut, this like the Browns did this against the uh, the Rams, right? The Browns did it against the Rams. Yeah, and they shut them down. Yeah, it, it, listen, I just think that's in that is incredible, Frank Wright, the front office there. That that might be the most complete organization in football outside the Patriots, from general manager to, to head coach to assistants, the coordinators, everything else. They've got – they're one they're one team that believes in analytics. You and I love this stuff. I believe that. I, I, I don't care about it in gambling because I think it picks up trends that are irrelevant. 
But in real football, it absolutely matters. It was so crazy. They actually showed some of the analytics. NBC is so good at this. They cover games better than any other team, any other uh, uh, television broadcast out there. They, they actually broke down the analytics to where at one point in time, late in the fourth quarter, if the Colts kick a field goal, actually put more points on the board, it lowers their chances of winning over if they go for it on fourth because it eats more clock. It takes oh, yeah. the other team the ball back, and you're only up by six now. And it's just like nobody in their right mind would think like that before these smart guys got into football and said, hey, baseball's doing it, basketball's doing it. You got to get into analytics. You got to delve into the numbers, and it's making them go on fourth on fourth down more often. I love that stuff. Well, it's, I've, it's the I've difference been between... all in on this Colts team all year, yeah. Gary. Oh, I know, Man, I know you have. Love this team. Uh, it, it's the difference between good teams and not very good teams, right? Like the Titans. I, I wish that CBS had been able to show this during the Bills game because you're down fourteen to seven with what six minutes left in the game. And I, I think I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to that so, game. But, so, yeah, yeah, it's like six minutes left, maybe maybe 6.30, whatever it is. And you've got fourth and four. And your field goal would be from 53 yards, and the guy has already missed three kicks on the day. Why, why would you kick a field goal there if you're down by seven anyway? And you know that with their, like the Bills offense, you get very limited chances. You haven't been able to get into the end zone. And your kicker can't make a kick. Like it's you. You have to be smart enough, and or at least have guys on staff that will tell you, "Yo, this is a really bad idea. You should probably not send the kicker back out there because even if he kicks it, odds are you're not going to get the ball back until about two minutes left. Like so, at least go for it and give yourself a shot, rather than you know still being down by more than a field goal." Like, it, it just yeah. – it, it was ridiculous. But as far as the Colts go, the Chiefs do this in prime time all the time. I talked to you about this last week on the preview show where, man, there is something about the Chiefs at home in primetime spots. And it has gone from coaching staff to coaching staff, quarterback to quarterback. It They – they do not show up in these spots for oh, whatever that's reason. That's not true. That's not yeah. true. I'm gonna bet it. I bet bet it's equal to 50-50. I mean, because what? Remember, remember when everybody like five years ago said that 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 Tom Brady's career was over and the Patriots are moving on after the Chiefs beat the hell out of them, and it was the on to Cincinnati, on to Cincinnati. That was Sunday night football. Or Monday that, night that was football. Monday night football. But yeah. like it's the same. Like it's a prime time game. I, I'm gonna bet it works out to 50-50, and that that. They, they sometimes win, they sometimes lose. It's just how this game goes. Uh, unless you're a team, we haven't ever seen anything like what the Patriots are doing in professional football, okay? No, you're right. Or somebody has just that crazy dynamic numbers against everybody else. No, so, you're, you're 100% right. Anyway, I don't I don't know that that's a prime time thing. Because last year, in prime time, in the playoffs, they beat the hell out of this Colts team. So, <laughs> anyway. All right, we'll move on. Packers. Look very, very scary right now. Aaron Rodgers yeah. has never had a defense or a running game like he has right now. He's still trying to figure this offense out. His numbers look very average, but it doesn't matter. They're beating, they're beating teams up. They're beating people at the line of scrimmage. At some point in time, you got to realize my numbers aren't important. Winning football games are important. Tom Brady doesn't care if he wins ugly, he wins pretty. If he hands the ball off and they score seven touchdowns and he never scores one, he does not care. He just wants to win. If the Packers and Aaron Rodgers have moved to this philosophy, then they are going to be tough. Yeah. They're going to be really tough. Now you're you're 100% right. Hey, going back to the Chiefs really quick, uh, 6 and 11 in Sunday night football games. So, about half. But but uh, but at home, it's even worse than that because they've only won it two at home. Sunday night football. You can't say prime time and then pick well, one day of the week. All right, so, how far back? Do, how far back does that go? Like, well, it's, it's only years? seventeen appearances. Yeah, seventeen appearances, but they don't have a Sunday night game every year. They do recently because they've been really good. Yeah, but previous years they've been mediocre to terrible, and they don't. You know, they weren't getting Sunday night games. No, you're right. You're right. Uh, so back you're, to the Packers. Right. Hundred percent right. Uh, are the Cowboys kind of are they a little fraudulent? Like it, I think I think that's absolutely realistic to talk about. 
Kel- Kellen Moore to be. looked great against bad defenses. Uh, has not looked as good. And it, I don't. I don't even know that it's great against bad defenses. I think it takes three, four weeks for you're a new OC and all your stuff is fresh and nobody's ever seen it. Yeah. And then now everybody in the league has seen your your book, and unless unless your book can get thicker, unless you have got anything else in that book, they all know what you're doing. Is uh is Dak hurting himself here? Uh, I think Jerry is very glad he didn't give Dak that forty million dollars. Yeah, I, I think at this point, like I think Dak would be very happy with the with the thirty, 30. Um, the thirty that Jerry offered him, and he and, said, "I ain't taking it." And now no, Jerry might be like, "Eh, you know, maybe let's talk twenty five, buddy." Twenty seven. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk twenty five, and we'll meet at twenty seven yeah. fifty, right? <laughs> yeah, but anyway, no, that's that's an interesting thing. I'm going to be paying attention to the Cowboys the next couple of weeks to see because they've got some some real teams. You don't you don't get to play the Eli Giants and the Redskins and the Dolphins every week. Yeah, now you're right about that. There's only two of those teams in the league. Yeah, well, you get the Bengals every now and then too, but I don't know if you play them. Yeah, either. but they'll give you even more of a fight than the other two will. So they will fight. Yeah. They will fight. That's right. Um, we'll move on. Number seven, Broncos no longer winless. And uh, this game went exactly how I thought it was going to go. I, I had no clue how it was going to work out. but And that's exactly Chargers, how it went. <laughs> I, bet the, I bet the Chargers to, to cover this game. I, I, I have reasoning to think and believe the Chargers are a better football team from top to bottom, from, from coaching staff to player all the way down, even with the injuries. And it didn't matter. I said it after I gave the pick. The Broncos are going to win. I don't know how. I don't know why. But this is what happens when the Chargers cannot lose. Cannot lose. That's when they lose. Oh yeah, I, I think it. Look, I'll tell you this: at this point, Anthony Lynn, for all the goodwill that he built up last year, this is this ain't good. Like you, you well, can't, you can't do this. You can't have games no, like this. Their offensive line once again is just a complete mess of itself. Injury, injury, injury. Defensive secondary, massive injuries, missing playmakers. Phil Rivers, he's he's 38 years old. Here's the problem. We compare everybody to Tom. See, Tom has broken this mold. And normally at 38, we're looking to put somebody on a trash heap. Yeah. And now we're like, oh, Tom's 42. So we got to stop that. It, Adrian Peterson came back from an ACL injury in like nine months. Like, no, okay. That's he's a freak. He's a genetic, different kind of specimen. It takes a year to a year and a half to get fully back to 100 percent from this thing. Yeah. Right. Everybody can't be held to this one special circumstance we've never seen before. And we're probably never going to see again. So so we have to stop that. And at some point in time, they need to start looking for the future. Agreed. Agreed. I, I can't. Right now, I the backup is Tyrod agree. Taylor. And that ain't happening. No, you're right about that. You're 100 percent right. Let's see. You want to move on to uh to number yeah, eight? No, I'm done with that. Yep. Number eight. If you had Jay Gruden as first coach fired, you win. And uh, <laughs> if the Skins finish DFL, they pull the Cardinals here and they just take two quarterbacks in back-to-back years? So I think it depends on who the coach is that they bring in, right? Like it, you got you to gotta figure that part out first before you – because Cliff Kingsbury drafting Kyler Murray was just a – like. Murray fit his offensive scheme. So if you do bring in a big time offensive mind that that somebody like Tua or whoever would fit, then you go with that. Or if you bring in somebody that's more pro set, et cetera, that thinks that Jake Fromm would be it or whoever. Um yeah. I don't think Jake Fromm would be like a top pick. But well, mm-hmm. I, I don't think he'd be a, a top three pick. I like don't know. I, I think he'll be a first rounder. I think when he gets in the combines, anything can happen. Now, you're I think, right about I think that. he is held back. We've talked about this. Jake Fromm is going to be hurt so badly for how Kirby plays him. Oh yeah, and but it, but it's also in there. like if if they were to open it up more, I think Justin Fields would still be there because I but, think that he would fit the offense better if it's more open. Um, you, you you might be right. I'm just telling you when he gets into the combine, no, it could and be they all start different. measuring against one another. I don't know that there's many people that are going to measure too, too highly better than him. No, you you may be right about that. But either way, we'll see. I think it depends on 
on the type of coach that they bring in. If they bring in a defensive guy, I don't think it's going to matter. Uh, I think Haskins can be a good quarterback, but That's what I mean, we're different. he was he was only a starter at Ohio State for a year. Yep. You know, and he did put up massive numbers and whatnot. It's going to take him some time. I think he can be a good quarterback. I don't know that he will be, but you got other things you got to fix there before you worry about a quarterback. Like it, it's you and I have talked about building up teams the right way and making sure that the lines are set and everything else. Like, but if you have a chance to get a just an, an absolute blue chip quarterback that you probably won't once you build the offensive line and all those things, you're never going to be bad enough to get that blue chip guy. That's the issue. Yeah. I mean, you got a point there. I I think you got to get them when you can get them strictly because if you take time and build all that other stuff, then you're taking a quarterback with the last pick in the draft or the last first round quarterback because your defense that you've built up, your offensive line that you built up and the skill players you surround them with, they're all going to win too many games to get you in that top five, top 10 pick. You just are. You're probably right about that. Uh, Dan Snyder, like. Well, there lies the other problem. Dan wants Haskins. Yeah. And if Dan falls in love with Haskins, he's not going to draft another guy no matter what. So if Haskins looks like crap the rest of this year, whoever the next coach is might just say, this is your guy. This is your – we're not drafting another guy. I don't care if we get the first big overall or not. We're not drafting another quarterback. I mean, you, you could end up seeing a repeat of the Jim Zorn years, I guess. God, it could get real ugly in Washington. Yeah. And that's yeah. sad, by the way. That is a – great franchise before Dan took it over. Even after he took it over, they've had – when they're good, there are very few places like the the capital of our country that, that gets up for that team. I mean, I, I agree with you. Uh, but, I mean, you got to think, it's been like two decades. It's been 25 you know, years oh, since they were yeah, – it is. It's, massive. I mean, that's, that, that's a long time, man. Like, <laughs> so, I think the culture that is there right now is uh, it's just – a little different. Well, Bruce Allen has to be pushed out a window, but that's not happening either. No, he's it, the it's ultimate not. yes man to Dan, and and he's going nowhere. So. No, you're you're right about that. All right, we'll move on. To number nine. Speaking right. of quarterbacks and teams that are terrible, um, if you were the Bears, what would you pay for? Talked about him earlier, Andy Dalton, because this team is going to be in the market for a new quarterback next year. Probably they're going to be one of those bottom three, four teams in the league. Hmm. And I don't think they're re-signing or bringing Andy back. Andy has almost no dead money on his contract, so his contract is super cheap in today's world for what quarterbacks make. And we think he's pretty good, right? Yeah, he's like he's always been able to put up numbers. He, I think, if the Bears had a quarterback like Andy Dalton, I think they could really compete for the Super Bowl. I, I think I agree with you. Like, I, the problem I, is, I don't, I don't think, know what they have to give up. I don't think it has been his fault. That oh, things have God, been no. so wrong in in Cincinnati. No, like not I, at all. He's I think he's actually a pretty serviceable quarterback, and and maybe is, above serviceable. No, above serviceable. He's 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 actually a good quarterback. This is the merits that we got to find a way to make football happen happen, and the reason is is because this Bears team is locked and loaded and ready to make a run. Yeah, they need a trigger man like nobody else. But the issue is, is they gave up two first round picks to move up to get Trubisky. Yeah. Then they gave up two first round picks after that to get Mac. I don't know how many bullets they got left to fire to get somebody else. Now those first two to get Trubisky, that that's on the GM, and and that's a guys to go situation. I I think when this is all said and done, if they don't make a move for another quarterback this year, then then I, I think this is a situation where, where they, they've got to let him go. I mean, the, the window was closing. Like, this is, this is the window. and I think there are enough offensive skill players there that they're really good. Their offensive line is, is serviceable to good. Yeah. And I think that defense, if they don't have to be on the field every damn snap, can get after folks. Yeah, I agree with you. I, and I think Andy Dalton could come cheap. Like, do you think the Bengals would take like a fourth round pick for him? Maybe. You're maybe, moving I, on from him anyway. Fourth, maybe a third. Okay. Um, but you're moving on from him anyway. You're not re signing him. You're not paying that, you know, money out after next year. Yeah. 
So get something for him. I mean, get get a little something, and I, I don't know how many takers you would have because he's got such a bad reputation. That's it. Um, I don't think many people are shopping for a quarterback of his level. But and I, I, I think, think the, the Bears, Bears right now are shopping for a quarterback of his level. Yeah. If not him, when Nick Foles gets healthy, do you try to go make a deal for Foles? Not for the money that he's making. See, I, I don't care about. See, I don't care about the money he's making because the quarterback can make whatever they need to make, and you justify it. Well, agree, but the books. you you bring in Foles, and your salary cap takes that hit, and your window closes even sooner than it you otherwise would. Oh, you, you got a couple of dead money people you can cut and let go. That's fine. I think I think you can always work the books out. I've watched the Saints not care about the salary cap for the last couple of years for me to think the salary cap matters anymore. Yeah, I used to be very worried about the salary cap and what players made and where my teams were. The Saints literally do not care about the salary cap. They, whatever it takes every year, we're all in this year. Okay, we're all in next year. Okay, we're all in the year after that. And they've done this for like seven years straight. They've yeah. got zero – I mean, they got nickels left before they hit the cap. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They never hit it. They never go over it, which you can't in the NFL. They don't let you. But And they're always competitive. So I've kind of begun to believe that the cap is just one of those things where everybody can find a way to make the accounting work. I don't know how they do it, but I think that's possible. Okay, I'm with you. Well, you bring up the Saints. You want to go on and move into uh, number 10? 10. Teddy Two Gloves. Um, He had himself a game Sunday, baby. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. 26-34, 314 yards, four TDs. Man, if he's figured this thing out, A, as much as I love Frank Wright, it'd be a hard sell right now. Frank, it, it The leader in the clubhouse is between Frank Wright and Sean Payton for Coach of the Year, and they ain't nobody else in the running, right? Uh, Kyle Shanahan. Yeah, but we think that I, I think that team's got a lot of talent. I think they're good. Both of these guys lost all world quarterbacks, and they yeah, are. I mean, you may be right about that. Yeah, um, they. But remember, Drew Brees is coming back. Like, look at this. If if Bridgewater keeps playing like this, which he goes on to, they're three and zero. Brees comes back. Yeah, they're three and zero without Brees. Uh, if if the offense is starting to hum under Bridgewater, do you bring back an old, you know, coming off injury Drew Brees? Oh, yeah. oh no, yeah, you bring Brees back, no doubt. Well, I mean, no you you have to because that like it's the politically correct thing to do, and uh, the fan so, base might riot. He's, he's but he is a he is he is better than Teddy. Uh, no, is, he this is, is not a Kyle Allen situation. I, I, I'm hoping that they don't rush him back too quickly. At this point, like you realize, you don't have to. Oh, right. no, that's that's the best thing they got. They yeah. have the luxury of time. Yeah. If you don't have to bring him back early, you don't. You make him, uh, well, let's wait another week, Breeze. And it's not you're losing your job. This is not a Nick Foles situation. Nick Foles has never done anything for Jacksonville before. So yeah. they've never had a star like this. This is not a Cam Newton situation in, 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 in Carolina where Kyle Allen, the team just looks so much better the team hasn't looked better with Teddy. They've just found ways to win. And finally, Teddy looked great in one of those wins. Yeah. Do you see uh do you see him go out like on Bourbon Street or whatever after the game? No, I didn't see like, that. At yeah, all. it's there was a video posting around Twitter or whatever, and he would walk into like these bars after the ball game. Like and this was hours after the game, obviously, but yeah. he showed up, you know, walking around with some people, whatever, and he walked in and people are chanting Teddy, Teddy, like it. It's it was good, man. It was a lot of fun. It was good to see him go out and like not just hide from uh, from the community. Um, I, I, I yeah. liked him. I liked him when he got drafted by Minnesota. Hated when his knee blew up. Thought he'd never play again. This is a great story. It I is. think there's a reason he turned down starting gigs to stay the backup quarterback there because he knows that job is his in a couple of years. And and I think he has earned that backup role to be – the, the air apparent to breeze when it's all over with. Yeah, I and do, I think I the agree. longer he stays in that system, the better he's going to be in that system, right? No, you're right. You're right. All right. We'll move on to 11. I'm going to I'm gonna go through this as quickly as I can. First, let's talk about the game. Um, the game, Monday Night Football, 49ers are a legit team. They are loaded. Um, they look great on offense. This, this zone blocking scheme is exactly what Kyle Shanahan wants it to be. Just an incredible display of just taking the will of another team away. Now I know that you're going to want to talk about this. Let me let me jump in really quick and tell you that I was dead wrong about Nick Bosa. 
Uh, in the offseason, I thought that he was going to be the biggest bust in the top five. I thought this guy is – like he he's injured and he – I just don't think he's going to work as well in that. Look, I was wrong. I was dead wrong. This guy is as legit as that. And he was he was on the prowl last night. He was hunting, and he got him some Baker Mayfield. Uh, and I'll let you continue on. But I, I, wanted to, I wanted to just come out and admit it. I was so yeah. wrong on That's Nick good. Bosa. Like, that, that defensive yeah. line is legit. Yes, their front seven is – I think they're the best front seven in football. I just because of the collection of seven that they have. Ah, man, I think, I think the Bears, like... But see, the Bears, I think, have weak spots where you can run on them and yeah. you can take Mac out of the game by running the other way. You and, might be right. And Rohan. Like, they're not seven deep. The, the Bears are the SEC with a couple of holes. I don't know what you would call this. They don't really have a weak spot in the front seven. None of them are Khalil Mack, but, but they also, none of them are Vanderbilt. You know what I'm saying? Th- this is Clemson's D line last year. This is Clemson's yeah. This front is, seven this is not year. a weak spot on the D line. Yeah. Um. I I thought the I thought that uh, um, the Browns could not my, my Browns could uh pick apart the secondary with quick passes, and uh, well, that's and why I I, you and I both bet them. Yeah, and and I was wrong. And and let me tell you why I was wrong. Baker Mayfield's the biggest problem for the Browns team this season. That that's that's just the truth. Yes, the O line's bad. The defense is banged up. You're absolutely right on those. But there were plenty of opportunities. Where the, Here's what I wrote last night, just trying to put all this together in my thoughts. Plenty of opportunities where he had time and receivers wide open. And I, and I cannot clarify enough. Odell Beckham, there was nobody within seven or eight yards of him multiple times. Multiple times. And he just missed him. He threw it so bad that the most athletic freak on the field can't catch the football. He has the biggest catch radius out of anybody on the field, and he can't get to it. You're missing him that bad when he's six and seven yards away from everybody else. Then he had chances where he had time, and he just holds the football over and over and over and over. Three of those big sacks, the one that was a fumble, these were not big blitzes. These were not big rushes where the offensive line just let people go. Now, that happened last night. But three of those big sacks came when he just held the football. And that's on you. That's not on your bad offensive line. That's not on this defensive front that's going crazy. And people can say, oh, well, the wide receivers were covered. Man, it's the NFL. You got to throw into windows. You got to throw guys open. That's just part of it. He doesn't have the accuracy to do it. Last year, he was as accurate as any rookie quarterback we may have ever seen. I, you call it a sophomore slump. I don't know what it is, but he's lost his accuracy. So, a hey, quick question on that. Um, do you are you surprised at all that there has not been very much drama come out of the Browns camp? No, because of the the egos that were all kind of thrown together and the amount of hype and the fact that they are not living up to that hype. I, I I'm just kind of waiting around to see because you know we know what OBJ has been and what he what he did with the Giants. He's been great, right? And he He's has been, been great. He said with nothing. The I mean, last week he got no throws, he got no real yards, but the Browns were winning. They were kicking the Ravens' butts, and he was dapping everybody and, and, and hooting and hollering and, and excited for his teammates and blocking yeah. downfield, which he's never done before. Um, so, no, I, I, we at some point in time we have to say, was this a New York problem? Because maybe it was because he got him out of New York and he doesn't act the same because he hasn't. No, you're now, right. he might one day. He could be a fuse. So let's go back to Baker. Both those interceptions, people are going to defend him. Both those interceptions were on him. The first one, it looked like Bosa was getting to him because we see Bosa getting to him. But that ball was gone before Bosa hit him, okay? And it was grossly underthrown. Oh, yeah. Grossly. Richard Sherman picked that thing off. Richard Sherman was five yards behind Callaway, five yards behind Callaway, and the ball came right to him, grossly underthrown. So that's the first one. Not even close. The second one, Antonio Callaway, wide open slant. Now, you know what slant passes are like. These oh, are yeah. quick, hot routes. And you got the fastest guy on the field running a hot slant. And, yes, he gets his hands on it. He bobbles it, and the defender grabs it. The ball was thrown 
low and behind a guy moving at a crazy speed the opposite direction. Yep. So should he have caught it? Yes. I get so sick of Browns fans. I'm one of them, but I'm so sick of, of, of my people defending this guy. Oh, well, the play, the, the receiver's got to make a play. I agree the receiver has to make a play. It would be nice if the receiver made a play. But at some point, you can't ask every damn spot. throw, every yeah. damn throw for a receiver to have to do something miraculous or Chubb to have to do something miraculous to bail him out. Yeah. He is the reason this football team is bad. And the reason they beat the hell out of the Ravens is because of Nick Chubb is a grown-ass man. The first quarter of this game, Odell Beckham had a better passing completion with one than Baker did with zero and more yards than Baker. Because we ran a trick play where Odell got to an open guy. Yeah. That's some bullshit. Yeah. This is on Baker. Now, you know what Baker's going to do? Some point in time this week, he's going to listen. He's not going to listen to us because we got like tens of people listening to us. But <laughs> but somebody from ESPN or There's Fox Sports 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 are going to listen to him. And they're going to they're gonna say some of these same things that are facts. They're going to call him out on it. They're going to try to hold him accountable and be critical because that's what they do for a job, for a living. And he's going to puff his chest, and he's going to say, if you don't wear brown and orange, you're not one of us, and I don't care what you think. And this is another way. At some point in time, the first thing you need to hear this, there have been a lot of people that have been wearing brown and orange longer than you've been alive that love this team far more than you love it, Baker. Okay? They just do. All right? And 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 you need to, you need to take some of that criticism. You need to make yourself better. Okay? Winners talk. When people win, they can talk all the yak they want. When you were winning last year, you can talk all the yak you wanted, and I loved it. I didn't I didn't have a problem with it at all. Right now, you're getting your butt kicked, and you look bad, and you're making this team bad. Be better, get better, and you can run that mouth. Other than then, stay in the locker room, shut up. I'm with you. I, I kind of feel the same way with uh, Taylor Lewan. and so for the Titans. That's it. People talking trash after a loss, no, 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 get, get out of here. Get out of here. And Baker hadn't done that yet. but No, he's not talking trash, but, but he, he goes at the media for criticizing him. Yeah. And he says, Rex Ryan can't criticize me. He doesn't have a job. No, he well, he doesn't have a coaching job anymore, but you know what job he does have? His job is to watch football and explain what's yep. happening on the field because he's been involved in this longer than you've been alive. And he's making more money than Baker. <laughs> <laughs> but that's irrelevant. What somebody's know, I'm making you. is stupid. But I'm just I, I make no money doing this. It costs us money to do this. Yep. And and I and I and I have the right to criticize him oh, because yeah. I am a fan. I watch, and the things I'm saying are not wrong. If I can be shown factually where I'm wrong, please show me. But I watch this game wide open, and everybody that I know that's a Browns fan, they get mad at me because I'm hard on Baker. You criticize him too much. You never have. There's nothing he can do to make you happy. I just want him to hit a wide open receiver. I don't think that's damn hard. No. Okay. Shouldn't be. Shouldn't be. You're right. You were taking number one overall. Anyway. Yeah. You you should be you should be better. All right. That's gonna wrap up the NFL recap show for week number five. Of course, we got our previews, picks, everything else segment uh, that's coming up this week. Uh, we'll probably do a top five, bottom five. I don't have mine with me, so we can uh, we can do that oh, tonight yeah, do and do it, it as a separate video. Um, hmm. But yeah, we'll we'll release that. We'll uh, we'll do all those things. Of course, show brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Six wonderful sports books. You can go find them over at tunicatravel dot com. Uh, our friends down in the Delta, they got a lot of awesome stuff going on. Go check them out, Tunica, Mississippi, and of course, check us out at winningcureseverything dot com. Whew, Chris, we uh we got some picks to make tonight. We got some previews to go over. Uh, looking forward to another fun week. I'm not prepared for the picks yet. So. <laughs> we, we got a little time. We got a little time. All right, that's going to wrap it up. We'll see you guys again tomorrow. Subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.